In today's video, you're gonna learn how to make 3D type and logos look great inside of Cinema 4D. Let's go. Hey everybody, it's Nick here again from grayscalegorilla.com, bringing you the tools, training, and tutorials to help make you a better motion designer. Now today, we're gonna be talking about 3D type inside of Cinema 4D and specifically how to make it more beautiful, how to make it more readable and really help your 3D type or logos really shine and sparkle when it hits the screen. Now this recording was recorded on a live show and if you'd like to see our live shows, don't forget to go to grayscalegorilla.com live to learn more. And of course, if you wanna see more videos just like this, don't forget to subscribe down below. There's also gonna be some references to other tutorials of ours in this video and I'm going to put all those in the descriptions below as well. So definitely take a look at that. All right, without going any further, let's head on into today's video. Here we are in Cinema 4D and uh, really quickly I wanted to show you the general idea of what we're going to work with as far as lighting is concerned today. Now we're going to concentrate more on typography, but I wanted to start with something that already had um, a lot of things that good typography in 3D has, which is rounded corners and places for light to catch. Because the thing to remember about anything visual that, especially in 3D here, is, is that lighting and, and texturing are gonna be the two tools that you're gonna use to make things look more readable, make them look uh, better, right? Um, those two things are gonna combine to really make things appear on the screen. It's no different than in real life. The way that we see the world is through the texture that it's made of and, that the, and the light that hits it. And the way that those two things interact uh, represent all of what we see. And that's what we're working in. We're working in a visual medium. So let's take a hint from something that already looks great with great lighting, and that's automotive, that's cars, right? So really quickly, check this out. This car, Car renders look so awesome, especially with really nice studio HDRs because they have all these little rounded corners and bevels and little things for the light to catch. So take a look at this Jeep here. We got the wheel that's blinging out. We got this little rounded corner here. And these are the things that we need to keep in mind when it comes to uh, typography. Because when we put so, and we're gonna do this in just a second, when we use regular default um, uh, type in 3D, there's often almost no rounded corners, no bevels, none of these nice little nice sexy edges to catch light. And that means when we go to light and, and try to make our type look good, it tends to look really flat and ugly because we are not keeping this in mind. So let's take a look. Um, I'm just going to rotate this HDR around and, and, and t like, look at that. Look at this. This car with all of its little rounded corners, look at the front pieces, the little bevels in the back. This car is full of those little details. So as I rotate light around, you're gonna see these details. And this is a real key that your type is gonna look good in 3D. If you can rotate some some uh, HDRs around it and, and get this little light play, this is where this is what we're gonna try to do with type. Now, really quick before we dive in, I'm using HDRI Studio Rig, and we're, I'm actually using a new version that's coming out really soon. It's gonna be a free update to anybody that owns it, and it allows you to do this in 3D. Now, you have to have R19, uh, and and I think it might support R18. I should actually look into that. But this ability to view your HDRI in the viewport is is new. Uh, to HDRI Studio Rig. So if you're looking at this and you're like, my HDRI Studio Rig doesn't do that, it will soon. We're gonna have a free update for you guys because this, the ability for you to position lighting in real time like this is huge, okay? So let's keep in mind that no matter what HDRI we use, in this case, we could just pull up this, uh, the Pro Studios Metal, which has been awesome to play with, especially with, um, really reflective objects like this. If you can grab an HDR and rotate it around your object and get this light play, that's where we're that's where we're trying to get with our type. So how do we do that? Okay. So let's jump in to uh, a new scene and get going. Now I have a, a bright pink sphere in my new scene because I set up my new.c4d file. We have videos about that if you're not sure of how I got all this stuff and a camera in my scene already. Definitely check that out. Um, but uh, let's start just fresh with a MoGraph MoText. 
with the with the worst typeface. <laughs> like San Francisco, okay, it's not that bad, but man, the kerning on this T and E. We'll talk about that in a second. I will talk about kerning today, but first of all, let's just set up some really basic uh, type here. So let's uh, let's say it's Cinema 4D. Okay. So what does what does this not have? Okay. So let's let's pull up our HDR Studio rig, and I'm just going to remove the background just for now, and let's rotate around this this uh, background here, and you can see that the type is doing nothing. Well, so first of all, we need something for our uh, eyes to catch, right? We need the bevels, we need edges, we need rounded corners, and by default, default type here is flat with with no bevel, and 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 then caps around the side. And the problem is, is it's good, it's so hard to, uh, it's impossible really to make that look good with reflections. Okay? And it's it's all everything everything in 3D is reflections. Everything is 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 texture. So we have to always think about texturing and lighting together when it comes to type. So first thing I'm going to do is jump in and grab a different typeface. So somebody asked uh, just before we got started here, how do you pick a good typeface? Well, uh, for my money a sans serif font is more readable and more flexible in 3D. So unless your uh, unless your um, you know your pitch or the company you're working with they have a specific font, if they're leaving it up to you, uh, try to go with a sans serif font. So let me show you um, you know there there the just in case you don't know serifs are these little edges on typefaces. Now this is what I I think they call this a block serif. Um, and these little squared serifs are pretty nice. You can see that this looks pretty good in 3D. Um, you know, we're going to talk about readability and we're going to talk about the kind of final visual of it. But altogether, these block serifs are a little bit easier to read sometimes than like the more curly serifs. But in all caps, this just does not look good. And, and oftentimes you're working in all caps when it comes to uh, 3D text because you're, you know, you're going to write something not so you're not going to write some of 4D. You're going to say something more like coming soon. That's a really popular thing <laughs> to like put in 3D text. And when you do that, uh, I'm also going to align this to the middle here. There we go. So it's, so it's always centered. When you pick a, a typeface, you want it to be readable. We're gonna talk a lot about readability in this video today. We're gonna to get into all the reflections and textures, but we're gonna to try to combine a little bit of everything. And you have to always remember that when it comes to readability, that your audience is watching this for the first time most times, and they need to be able to look at this word and scan it and know what it means. And if you use a, 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 like a crazy typeface, something that is uh, non-standard, uh, it's gonna take a while for them to, uh, your audience to be able to look at this and decipher it. And so what, what you really want often is to have something that is instantly recognizable. So this is cool looking and this could be nice, but it's not gonna be instantly recognizable by eyeballs. They're gonna have to kind of look in between these circles. And so when it comes to picking a typeface, uh, my my go to is uh, a sans serif font. I I used I used to use this a ton. I still do, um, but Typograph Pro is kind of a Gotham style typeface. If you're familiar with Gotham, that was literally made to work well in 3D, and it does work well in 3D. It's very readable. It's a great example of a sans serif typeface. Remember earlier we talked about those little edges, those little squirrelies at the end of letters that pop up some with some typefaces. This is sans serif, which just means there's no serif, right? It's it's just real clean, modern typeface. This is my go-to. Now, other ones include Arial. You could use Helvetica, Futura. All of those are sans serif typefaces that are just easy to read. They look good in all caps. And we don't really have time to go into all, uh, you know, <laughs> all of these crazy typefaces. But you know, what I would stress is to get comfortable with one or two of them and really understand how they work because you want to understand not just how they work in, in readability, but how they bevel and how they interact 
when we start to add those things, right? So is, has anybody tried to add a bevel and then all of a sudden their, their typeface is like too fat to read? Um, let's just, well, I'll just show you what I'm talking about. If you go into the Motex, you go to caps, you go to fillet cap, it's going to add a cap around our type. So if we zoom in to this G here, you can see what it did is, uh, let me just reduce it. If I go to, uh, let me just do zero on the back, and, and this is the front, yeah. So if I if I go to zero, you're gonna see it's, it, it, the, the corner has no bevel, and as I turn this up, the bevel gets bigger, and you're gonna notice that the bevel gets bigger from the outside of the type, which means if you make this bevel too thick, we have problems. Oops, let me turn that up. We have problems. Some problems include this G is now touching here, and this inside bevel is getting all squirrely over here. It's kind of like that. And here's the real, here's the real problem with this. It becomes unreadable. Look at the S here. Look at how squished this S is coming. Not only just the, all the geometry issues, but look at all the little bevels, the little problems, and, and the, the overall shape is, is, is dying, okay? You are, you are killing this S. Now O's, O's look great. Look at this, this O looks amazing. This N is getting a little pinched, not bad. But again, this is a typeface that's literally designed to mess with bevels and we're still having issues here. So what do you do? So well, first of all, we're adding bevels, we're adding roundness because we're trying to get back to that car. We're trying to find how to make little edges and bevels in our type so that it will catch the light more beautifully, so it will um, look cool in motion. And that's one of our goals. Our goals are to make it beautiful, make it readable, and to make it look interesting so that people continue to watch. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to grab someone's attention and say, hey, this movie's coming soon. Or you know what? Or like uh, this Friday. Right, you're trying to tell them something. You're trying to get the word across, and you have to um, keep it interesting in order to hold people's attention. So um, we're going to talk about all that stuff today. So Nick, get to it. What do we do here? Well, one thing I would do first is to just limit the amount of bevel that you add, so that you don't uh, get into these problems. So um, it's hard to give you a number because typefaces are all different sizes and all this stuff, but you don't want things to do this in touch. That's not what we want. We want just enough to make it little interesting little bevel edges. And later on, I'll show you a trick to, to kind of add more bevels without sacrificing readability and more roundness. We're gonna get into that. Okay, so first of all, limit the amount of radius. Now, the second thing is, is if you want it more rounded, you have to add more steps. This is one by default. I usually just kind of turn it up to five and that gives me enough steps to round these corners. So now look, we got these nice rounded edges, and that means when we start to add our lighting that it's gonna be uh, a lot more visible. So let's do that. Let's create a new material. I'm just gonna use top coat to create a uh, just pure chrome material. And top coat's another uh, plugin that we sell at Grayscale Gorilla. It helps you make physical uh, textures, uh, specifically, um, physical and reflectance-based textures very quickly and you can layer them. I won't get into that too much today, but I just wanted to drop this pure chrome metal on our type so that we could see this. Now see what we're talking about. Now let's look, let's look without the fillets and without the caps. That's what our text looks like <laughs> with no bevels. Do you see it? I don't see it either. You know why? Because there's literally nothing reflected. Now, if we if we rotate this around and try to catch the front, we can maybe see a little bit of reflection here, but that's not very sexy. That's just looks like white tight. And so the key thing I want, the thing I want you to take away is round edges, all these bevels are, are, are is what gonna, is what's gonna make the type uh, stand out. So now look, now we have some edges. Now it's not super readable, we'll get to that, but now we have this nice, so now let's rotate this and you can see all the little bevels and blings and look at all that. That's what we're going for. Boom. Okay. So step one, got it. Step one, got it. So minimal bevels. So what do you do now? Well, uh, now it's not very readable, right? 
you know, how do you how do you get all that all these sexy reflections, but but keep the uh, word itself readable? Well, this is where you can start to use textures along with reflections to kind of cheat a little bit, get a little bit of both worlds, because the most readable type is black type on a white background. Right? You pick up a book anywhere, you flip through it, it's going to be black type on a white background. And this is not by accident. This is uh, the way that our eyes see the most. It's about contrast. There is contrast between the letter and the page around it. And never forget that the page around a letter is just as important as the letter. right? Because if the background was black and the letter was black, there would be no contrast to see. And what we have here is exactly that. We have a black letter with some kind of reflective edges and a black background. And that might be okay to be a little bit, you know, to maybe show one word or to keep it a little spooky. But man, you know, when you're really trying to get some, um, a message across, you don't want to, you don't want to guess that they read this properly. So, so how do we deal with that now? Well, one thing you could do is just add a new material on top of the text and uh, use a little luminance. Now I'm gonna turn everything else off. I'm just gonna use a little bit of luminance and uh, we're gonna bring some uh, color back to the front facing parts of our type. So the front facing parts, which is lit now, but this has the bevels. What I'm trying to say is I don't want to, to add luminance to the bevels. They already have these nice little reflections. I'm trying to add it just to the front. Okay, so how do you do that? So to make this more clear, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna make this kind of reddish orange for now. I'm gonna put it on the text and you can see it all became reddish orange. We only want it on the front and you can actually tell your texture where to go on type. And uh, you know, for those of you who've used type for a long time in cinema, this may be a little bit uh, basic, but we're gonna get to more advanced stuff in a bit, I promise. Um, right here in selection, you can tell this texture where to apply itself on the type. And in this case, I want a cap. So I'm gonna go C, capital C, and then one. So I want it on the front facing cap. And now what I have is front facing color with nice blingy beveled edges. Now I get the best of both worlds. Okay, so now that you see what's going on, we don't have to make this bright orange. We can make this even a little subtle gray color. Okay. now. I don't want any of that red in there. So let's go do this. So now you can see we're dialing in, we're, we're balancing now the readability. Okay, we still get the outlines of the letters here. And I'm just gonna dial this back a little bit. Just enough to, to let our eye kind of look at this and say, okay, I see what that says. And we got these nice reflections and I can start to layer these things together to, again, make it beautiful, and make it readable, make it visually interesting so that people continue to watch. And on top of this, we could even animate this HDR kind of moving around. You see all those little dancing edges? Let me pick another HDR just so we're not blinded by that uh, back piece here. This is from our metal, um, our Pro Studios Metal Pack, and it works really well on type, actually. I've been using it a ton lately. And you can see now we have all these little dancing edges around our type, see that? So imagine now you're animating the rotation of this HDR, and all those little dancing rotating edges are popping up. So that could be a look in itself, like a little zoom back with a camera. You can see that, I'll make a little sound effect. Pew. Animate, uh, animate your HDR rotating around, or you can even just grab um, the, the studio rig itself and, and rotate it this way. And you can see now it's actually rotating in circles on the type. And that alone is enough to be visually interesting and readable and all this stuff, right? So now maybe you animate your camera and do all that stuff. So really, really simple, but now you're combining all these things together. And if your your client has specific colors uh, or a specific background or something, you know, you you can dial that in with that. Maybe it's maybe it's a dark type on a white background, which we could just uh, simulate really quickly. Uh, turn off there it is. Uh, really quickly here. Um, and then the only thing with a, a, a brighter background is that you, the reflections on the type 
can can kind of go away. It's the reason that really reflective look looks the best on dark backgrounds because those reflections really stand out. So what I would do is, um, you know, try to push it toward, you know, if you had to have something more colorful, try to push it toward a darker uh, palette if the idea is to get reflective text. So that that's an option too. You may have to darken that up anyway. Okay, so what do you do now? So now let's quickly talk about, um, let's quickly talk about kerning. And uh, somebody mentioned it in the in the live chat. I just wanted to make sure that I went over kerning. And uh, if you're not familiar with kerning, it's uh, basically the the art of moving letters closer and farther away from each other to make them more readable. And there's actually nothing better to illustrate this than a brand new Mo text uh, sitting here. So let's just do it with this real fast so we can talk about it. Brand new Mo text. You click it. It says text. And the real big issue here, kerning wise, is that this T is so far away from the EXT uh, that you're like, is this even one word or does, it, does this say TXT, right? It's a long ways away. So, really quickly, how do you fix that? Well, you come in and quickly, why is this important? This is important because readability is one of the most important parts of your job as playing with text. You want these words to be read. You want the customer, you want the user, you want the person that's looking at this commercial that you're making or, or this graphic that you're making and understand what's this person's name? What am I selling? What am I doing? It is your job to be clear. You are a communicator at the end of the day. As an animator, especially in commercial work, you are communicating. So how learn the tools to help you communicate more clearly. And kerning is one of them because it allows our brain to look at this word and not go, what does that say? Text. Oh, it says text. You know why? Because we kerned it. So let me show you how. Go up to uh, click your Motex and go right here. It says kerning show 3D GUI. And now each letter has their own little widget and you could just simply go, boom. Now it says text, dude. Now it says text, text, text. It's like a Muppet thing, text, text, bam. Also, this this X and E is a little little far apart. Okay, now you don't want it too close, right? And 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 this takes time. This is not a this is not a perfect science. It's not like oh, I'm gonna measure in between these things. It's a very um, flexible thing. And you know how I do it? I squint. I squint and try to make it kind of blurry and, and look at the space in between the letters and say, okay, that feels better to me. And there's somebody out there now that's watching that is even better at, at kerning that's saying, oh, Nick, you, you're messing this way up because this this right here, like if that was a little tighter, it'd be better. Be it does take practice, but definitely learn this. This is a very simple example, but it comes up a lot. You'd be surprised, especially with uh, upper and lowercase letters. Okay, so that's kerning. Want to make sure to give a shout out. Let's see if we have any kerning issues. Now, this typeface in particular does really well, especially if you're using all caps. Um, but I can see uh, I can see an excuse for talking about this this M I N and the O's being a little bit too far apart. And just remember that you could do this at any time. It's non-destructive. You could grab it and you could change it. So in this case, I'm just going to give this I a little bit of space and maybe tighten that. Uh, M O up and the C O and just kind of like, all right, that feels better. And does the soon, is that a little close to the S? I'm not sure. The N could definitely get pushed. Okay. Very subtle stuff, but this stuff matters. It's about readability coming soon. Okay. Okay. It's looking good. It's looking good. Now let's, uh, let's talk about this while we're at it. So I'm going to add a little bit of depth. Okay, I wanna to talk to you about camera and the type of camera that we're using. Now the default camera, I wanna say is like a 35 camera. Let's just grab a default camera. Default camera lens, 35 millimeters. Now, what's the problem with that? Okay, the problem with ty using typography and using it with, uh, I gotta use my other camera here. By the way, many of you have asked about this layout. And if you're watching, wondering about this layout and this updating preview, uh, we have a tutorial on this 
at Grayscale Gorilla, and uh, you can go uh, find it and you could download this layout, my specific physical um, layout here and use exactly this. So if you've been wondering about this, look up, um, oh, I, I should know this off offhand, but it's like viewport, physical render viewport, um, and uh, you could download this and learn more about this. Okay, 35 millimeter camera. What's What's the problem here, Nick? The problem is this. See how the C is 3D and it is fighting with the shape of the C. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but the N has the same problem. The N, the 3D part of the N, the thick part, the, the, the extruded part is competing with the front part when we, when we kind of look at this word and we try to read it quickly. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that this could be hard to read, especially if uh, things were a lot uh, brighter, like if, if uh, the HDR was um, uh, just, for example, a little bit brighter. This starts to get really tough, especially if we don't have that front part um, uh, kind of separated out the way that we added that front piece. So you can see right here, this can get very, very funky the way that the depth part of this word, um, it allows you to read this quickly. Now it sure looks cool, but this is the problem with 3D typography is these type designers spent their life perfecting exactly where to put all these pixels on all of these typefaces. And here we go and start slapping bevels and 3D stuff on it. So what can you do to help this? Well, one thing you could do is use a more zoomed in lens. And this will just flatten out some of your 3D. It'll still make it feel 3D, but it will alleviate some of these issues on the side. So let's try to make another camera. Here's the, our other camera. In this camera, I'm gonna make it much further in. I'm gonna go 120 millimeter lens, which is much more zoomed in. I'm gonna pull back on this type and I'm gonna show it to you roughly in the same position. Now ignore this one for, well, we could use this one. There's this camera and there's this camera. Okay, I want you to look at the C and the N here and here. And I want you to look at the difference between those two and 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 uh, try to try to pick out what's what's happening. Oh, I picked the wrong camera. I gotta go here. Ready? See that? See how the M, the O, and the C, the the outside letters have much more of that parallax, have much more depth to them at this camera than they do at this camera. And this is ultimately much more readable. Okay, now what's cool about this camera is we could still spin around it and see that there's plenty of 3D going on and we could spin around and do all this cool stuff, but when it comes to actually looking down the barrel here, really looking at the text, is it readable? Yes, much more readable with a zoomed in lens than not. So just another trick I want you to put in your toolkit, if, if you're trying to make text more readable, Maybe try zooming in a little bit more and moving your camera back because the the ultimate um, like opposite version of this is to like show you you know fisheye you know fifteen millimeter fifteen millimeter lens look at all that type right now that could be cool in motion to like really like feel like it's flinging by but man at the end of that if you really want to have it sit here and be readable it's going to be tough. So just another thing to put in your tool belt, keep it in mind. Okay, okay, so where do we go from here? What makes, uh, let, let's talk about another way to handle uh, uh, type on a logo. I'm gonna pull up, um, the, let's see, let's pull up this one. So a lot of you ask about, excuse me, grab a little water. A lot of you ask about our YouTube intro. So if you haven't seen uh, our YouTube intro, it's on almost all of our YouTube tutorials. We have this YouTube intro that uh, Chad Ashley made. Expert, awesome, awesome intro. I'm so glad it, it's, in, it's in front of our videos. It looks so dang good. Here's the scene file from it. And it, you know, 
he ran into uh, a lot of these similar things and he's been doing this for years. He knows how to make type readable. And now he made this in Arnold. Uh, we're going to do this in physical render just cause, uh, uh, you know, that's what I'm more comfortable with, but these, these, uh, apply no matter what render are you using. Um, he made a dark background and he added this, uh, kind of metal texture to it. And specifically it has a lot of nice, you know, reflectivity to it. But when it, when it settles down, when it really settles down to be a, a real word like training, there's not a ton of variation to it. There is enough variation to keep it interesting. I'm going to turn up our render settings, uh, just a bit. So it'll smooth out the metal there. And, the, the thing I wanted to show you with this scene is that a lot of the things we talked about in that last video is true here. We have beveled edges that's catching a lot of nice reflection around the edges. We have a readable front facing uh, texture. Okay, now this is this could be very different if we uh, turned down the reflectiveness uh, of this layer. So in other words, we have some blurriness on our Chrome if I took that down, this is not very readable, right? Look at all the weird variations we have through this, through this texture. But by turning up the blurriness on our main texture and letting this render, we're starting to get a little bit more uniform across the front, but still enough of a gradient to make it interesting, okay? So I'm gonna just keep turning this up until it gets to a good point and that's a little better maybe even a little bit more and I'm trying to fill in those center letters there it is you see the difference on that it's very subtle it's only a two to five percent difference between here where the a the i and the n kind of start disappearing and here where it starts to fill in but you can see it's visually much darker here than here. This is definitely brighter than this. What you, what you, what I'm trying to stay away from is where it's all super uniform because this starts to get boring. Look at instantly we're looking at this and going like less interesting because differences and gradients and bevels and edges and all this bling, this is what makes it look good to go back to the beginning of this video talking about a car and how all those little edges and bevels make it look good and interesting and the way that we light it shows off its curves. We want to do the same with type and we also still need to keep it looking like type. Just like we need to make it look like a car, we need to make this look like type. So it's, it, uh, it all matters. Um, so let's, let's go back to, to, to right around where we were. I think that feels good. And again, look at the T and the G definitely have more depth than looking straight on, but it's not crazy. It's not, it's not distracting. It shows that it's 3D without making it distracting. And so now, it, and then it explodes into uh, our logo and our logo does the same thing. And in fact, in the final version, he's got a bling that kind of blings across the front. And again, that's all, it, actually you can see it right there. We talked about moving and rotating the HDR. Look at that nice little rotation added to the end of this. Now, this is somebody that's been working with typography and 3D for years. And, uh, and it, you know, it, go watch the final uh, bit on this. Again, it's on almost every uh, YouTube <laughs> tutorial we've done um, to, to see the final piece. But you could see great care was taken to make this interesting looking, to make it readable, and to make it... Um, eye catching so that we continue. What's next? What's next? These pieces move forward. Okay. Boom. Okay. So now we're talking a little bit more about animation. Uh, I wanted to bring up this scene here. Now this scene, I need something better to say in the news today. What do you think? Uh, we can go with, um, tutorial time today. <laughs> the name of my news program. Uh, so uh, what we have here is a look that I'll, I'll use every once in a while uh, that kind of does all this, but in a different way. It's a little bit more visually interesting. It's a little more 3D looking. You know, if you have a client that's like, yeah, that metal type looks good, but I need it more 3D looking. You know, I, I need it more like in that style, like sports graphics or something like that. I'll pull out this style every once in a while because look at, look at all the blings we got all the readability in the world. We got everything you need right here with this one style. And uh, I'm gonna, um, 
uh, kind of quickly go through how you make something like this. So if again, if you're if you're stuck on an idea, you're like, how do I make this type look simple? I'm just trying to make this really nice, you know, lower third or something like that. This look works uh, really well. So let's kind of start from scratch. I'll just turn these off. Uh, and let me just play it all the way through here so you can see what it is. Um, in this case, I'm using a, a HDI Studio rig for the reflections, but a signal camera rig uh, for this animation. And uh, we also actually have a video on that as well. You could go to our YouTube page and look up a uh, signal camera rig. You can see how this is built. And uh, if you own signal, you can actually download this rig and use it in your um, animation. So definitely check that out as well. I'm sorry I'm referencing all these other videos, but instead of telling it to you all over again, just go reference those other videos. Uh, I'm also doing a little tracking on the letters. Do you see how the letters are kind of um, pulling apart a little bit? It's almost like the overall kerning is stretching out. Now you've seen this trick happen before. And again, what does this do? This adds a little bit more visual interest to the scene. It gives your eye something to look at. Again, readability, attention, trying to make this look good. It's our, it's our job. We need to learn this. Okay, so how do you make this? I'm going to turn off the Mo text. We're going to start from scratch here. And uh, we're going to pick, um, let's go with, what do we do here? Futura maybe? Let's go with that. This type picker, I tell you, not my fair. I really, I'm a, this is going to age me, but the old one was awesome where you could, have save favorites and all that stuff. Uh, Cause with this, you just gotta go through all of these. Let's go with Gotham, that's, a, that's classic. So uh, I'll just write today on, okay, boom. Perfect, let's center it, bang. Now, let's talk about how to get that look. Okay, so first of all, we need to uh, add some caps. And in this case, we're gonna do a fillet cap. We're gonna look at this uh, type. And remember earlier, we talked about how if you turn up the radius too much, it will overlap. Look at the A, right? This A, you, you, you add, keep adding bevels, the A disappears. And, and that, that center hole goes away. Well, there is a checkbox in Motex and other text tools that allows you to constrain the bevel to the existing position of the letter. And this actually looks really good. It, it can give you issues in some cases, um, but this helps a lot when it comes to readability. And it's uh, right here, it's called constrain. So if I click constrain, now when I bevel, it's gonna bevel in. Hmm. Interesting. Now look, we still have issues. <laughs> we bevel too much in, we get all these weird patterns on the inside, but we keep it minimal the way we did with the other one. We have the same thickness of our letter, but now our bevels are going in. Okay, this also allows us to do some cool tricks uh, that I'm gonna show you uh, right now. So first of all, I'm gonna bevel this. I'm gonna give it some roundness. I'm gonna bevel it inside. And I'm also not gonna use convex. I'm gonna use a uh, half circle. And a half circle just means it's gonna kind of bevel and then and then move in and give us this kind of like um, extruded edge around the whole piece, okay? And again, we're trying to add interest. We're gonna try to add curves so that our, our type looks good. Let's drop our chrome on it and see what it looks like. Look at all that. Look at all that edge blingy bling. Let's zoom out. That's a technical term. It's a motion design uh, only term. It's called edge blingy bling. We got some of it, we want more, we want more. So how do we add even more interest? I'm gonna move this chrome texture so we can look at the plane geometry. Well, that's step one, okay? Well, here's the trick. You duplicate your text, okay? I'm gonna just duplicate my Mo text and now I have an exact copy. What do I do with this copy? I turn off constraint and now when it bevels, it bevels outwards which means I could crank this up and go out. Now we're still gonna have the A issues. You still you still can't go crazy with this, right? Right, you can't like, you know, wham. That's uh, cool, not readable, okay? So what do we do? Well, now we're adding even more of this little beveled edge. And uh, I think eight looks pretty good. I'm gonna do the same to the, to the back so it's a little even. And now look, we got our own little custom beveled edge. And in fact, what I ended up doing was shrinking this thickness down and moving it back on the type. So now we have 
and, and we can fix the back. I just didn't worry about the back because we're not going to see it. But if so, you can match the same bevels on the back and get that. But here's what we have now. Let's turn up the thickness on this object. Bam. Let's turn up the thickness on this one. And let's move it back so it's a little bit more centered. So now what we have is this tight face. We have these nice little interesting inside curves. We have some nice interesting outside curves. And we can even texture these different to get different looks. So in this case, what I did was I used kind of like a, uh, a luminate material, which we talked about earlier, with a little bit of reflection, just added some top coat um, uh, gloss to it. And then on the outside, I used chrome, and I get this look right here. Okay, so this these colors might need to change, but the overall style is is here. And the, the other secret to this look is some ambient occlusion. Okay, so um, if you have a Shure Eye Studio rig, we have these insert render settings. Uh, if you want to learn more about this, definitely check out our videos with HDRI Studio rig. Won't get into all of them now, but insert render settings allows you to pick render settings uh, depending on what you already add them added them, uh, depending on what type of look you're going for. So we have GI settings to make GI render quickly, but still look good. In this case, I want to use these ambient occlusion settings to add some shadows on the inside of our text. What I'm trying to get are these shadows right there. See those little beveled shadows on the inside? Here's without it. Okay, see it's all just luminant. With it starts to add a little bit of that detail. But bam but bam, okay, now we're talking. So now we have this really simple text, really simple to make. We have our uh, signal camera rig animation here that's going a little crazy. I wanna maybe zoom in a little bit more like we talked about. Zoom in, I'm gonna pull this dolly out. And this is just the signal camera rig. There we go, gotta go further. There we go. And uh, we could change the rotation. Maybe it comes from the other side. So let's go uh, negative 70. Ooh, hello. Boom, today on. And then how did I do that tracking? Well, I just uh, uh, added a signal for that as well. You can hand animate this with keyframes, but a signal allows you to change it really quickly down the road. So uh, if you have signal, you can go to uh, your tags, add a signal and add um, tracking, which is horizontal spacing to that Motext. I'm gonna do the same here. And then I'm gonna go into the signal. You can highlight two at once and change the parameters. I'm gonna start with zero. And then I'm gonna go up to, or maybe I'm gonna go down on this one. So it's gonna end here. And it's gonna start at further out. Boom. So now we have our animation. We could even go backwards and go like negative and have it squish out. That's kind of a weird look, but that's a thing. I th I like it more when tracking is a little bit more subtle, when it's just like this. A little bit of a move. Just enough. Might not not might not even be enough. There we go. Love it. Okay, so that is uh some ideas on uh reflection, readability, thickness, keeping things simple uh in order to um to do this. So let me see here, I think I had one more example, uh, and that's this type. We get a question about this all the time about balloon style type. And um, these are, this could be very tricky to hand make, um, and I, I think you could buy models sometimes of like handmade ones, but all the time, there, we get the question all the time, like how do you just do this with regular type? And the quickest way that I found to do it is to, first of all, find a typeface that isn't too crazy. It's gotta be thick, right? It's gotta be like, you, you wanna pick the bold version, okay? In this case, I have this ITC here. Even this thick thick one here might even be better. And then what we do is we put it in a super text. Now, super text was uh, originally uh, invented as a plugin to help with transform. Um, 
So Transform is a different tool. I won't talk about that. We sell that on the store. Transform's made to make MoGraph style effects really simple. And, and so many MoGraph style effects are type. And so we created super text to be able to manage your type very simply, uh, allows you to round corners very easily. It allows you to connect uh, faces together. And it allows you to do this, which is drop the overall resolution very easily on type and make it uniform so that when you put that in a subdivision surface, that it rounds all beautifully and you get this kind of like balloon style type, okay? And uh, if we don't have a full scale tutorial on this, look for that soon, but the formula is bold, beefy text in a super text set to subdivide, set your subdivisions uh, until it gets nice and blocky, usually pretty low, and then add a subsurface, uh, subdivision surface to round it and you get this nice bubbly text. And then of course you can, you know, add a, a factors and make, make the make the text kind of bubble around. But this look is really cool, especially when it comes to simple short words, okay? And and I think I need to curtain this, it's bugging me, a little too tight there around the 2018. Still too much space, come on eight. There we go. Okay, so the main reason I wanna show you this effect because this effect works really well for, for short words, for letters like this, and it also looks ton, ton awesome. That's a technical term, ton awesome with HDR. Um, and so if you already have an HDR on your scene, you want it to kind of match the scene, it's just like perfect round text. And check this out, you can just rotate your HDR around and, and look at it in the scene. In fact, uh, let me pick one of my favorites, this church entrance one. Always looks good. Check this out. You can make sound effects when you do it, but boom, looking good. So all this is, is that with a uh, really simple chrome, blurry chrome effect. Uh, this was made with top coat with a blurry modifier on it. And uh, that's it. All the other pieces are also little chrome pieces. You could probably get fancier with the confetti and the background color and all that stuff. But very simple to set up. And when you need really, really simple balloon text, uh, super text, if you have transform, it comes free with transform. You could use that and boom, subdivision, surface it around. So uh, let me double check uh, for one more uh, scene here. And you know what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll just jump back to our original scene. Cars. Question, why do they look so great in reflective environments? Well, just like we talked about, your type needs to have parts of it that are reflective, parts of it that can catch edges, parts of it that can catch corners. If, if you remember early when you were learning Cinema 4D or any 3D pack, anything, and you tried to add reflections to a, a cube, you may have looked at the cube and you're like, well, why isn't that cube being reflected? Odds are that it was being reflected, there just wasn't any bevels or any edges. It's just this flat piece of geometry that doesn't look interesting in reflective environments. And then you may have added a sphere to it. And now the sphere, uh, wow, this, this looks great. There's a reason I use spheres in a bunch of tutorials. They look great. They're simple. They're right there. They catch, it, they catch environments well. They catch blurry uh, reflections. And boom. So how do you make your type more interesting? By adding bevels, by adding the edges. You can see this car doesn't just have a sharp corner that goes from this panel wrapping around to, the, to this wheel well. It is nice and beveled. I could zoom on in here and we could take a look. Look at that nice round bevel. This little round edge here is beveled. This little panel comes out and then down. These are visual, um, they do this for visual reasons, right? Uh, now in the real world, everything has a little bit, bit of a bevel, so there's that, but th these are not accidental bevels and edges. These make things look interesting. They make things look good. I mean, look at that, we pan around, we see all the roundness, all the little pieces, right? And so when it comes to anything, this applies to anything that you're trying to make visually, look visually interesting, Reflections, bevels, textures, edges, they all go together to help make something look visually interesting and ultimately give it its form and give it its shape.
So when it comes to typography, give your type form, give your type shape. Now quickly, I'll show you one more thing and it's this. Logos, same thing we just talked about. Same thing we just talked about. If you get a logo and they give you the Illustrator file and they want this to be in 3D, all that stuff we just talked about applies to this as well. So this is our Grayscale Gorilla logo. Let's do what, you know, what we do, right? We put this in an extrude. We say, hey, why aren't you working? We could say hierarchical. Uh, that's, that's, that's how I say it, hierarchical. And, uh, you know, we're going to, we're going to extrude this logo and we're going to, uh, let's, let's just set it back up really quickly. Chrome text, uh, add HDRI, which is going to add HDRI studio rig. And, um, I'm going to remove the floor and the background. And, uh, we're going to add this Chrome material to the logo. Done. Okay. Now what? Well, let's turn this camera on. Oh, we gotta have a camera. Turn on camera. Let's turn this camera on down here. Oh, I apologize, that's my fault. Let's zoom in. Boom. Okay, so what's wrong here? I'm gonna rotate this HDI Studio rig around and we get reflections. It is reflective, but let's be very clear. What do we, what do we learn, right? That, like even right there, we're catching some nice round top corners. That, my friends, is not very pretty. It's not very readable, right? There's so much uh, distortion with this 3D effect. All the things we talked about, zooming in is gonna help, right? Zooming in and moving our camera back and making it more on, uh, on angle. Beveled edges, all these things we talked about, uh, and I could quickly set this up here. You know, not using too fat of a bevel. Look at that bevel. That's way too much. So I'm going to add some more steps. I'm going to say 0 0.3. I mean, this is scaled down really small. Um, 0.3 bevel. Let's try that. There we go. Okay, so now when I rotate my HDR around, find a nice angle, and I hit render. Now, now we're talking, folks. Look at that. Blingy bling on the corners. What else do we need to do? We need to make the actual logo more readable. Okay, so that could that could mean using something like the the R uh, or the cap um, uh, te texture, adding a luminant texture to that or changing the background. Simply changing the background on this will make this more readable because then we could have black type on a white background. So let me just turn off on the background hit render and now we got it. The problem with this is that in a white environment, this logo would not be all black like that, <laughs> right? Uh, in, a, in a big bright white environment, that logo would be blinging, blinging, okay? So we have to keep that in mind too, like that balance is not working. So all the things that we did before we could do to this logo and just to finish it out, cause I hate having an unfinished uh, thing here we can, first of all, blur this chrome texture because that's gonna help a ton. Remember we did that with the uh, Grayscale Gorilla um, uh, uh, animation, the YouTube animation, just blurring the front. And I'm gonna add our uh, interactive render region here. And uh, I'm gonna add our render settings because that's not going fast enough for me. There we go. Let me turn up the quality a little bit. There we go. All right. So now we're blurring the, the chrome texture. That's helping. There we go, a little bit better. I'm gonna pull this back. And then I could rotate this around and try to find a better angle where we're getting some, some blurriness. And then what I would do is maybe even tone down the overall reflection, right? Because what I want to do is kind of keep the front black and keep the edges more reflective. And that alone, will make it more readable. So let me go ahead and just crank up the uh, render settings here. That might be enough to keep it readable. Uh, I'm gonna render this into the picture viewer. Look at that. I mean, just that, I think, we, I think we're onto something here. We can dim, we could probably get a little bit brighter in the front. And again, I could cheat this a little bit and just say uh, new material create new material, luminant, and this this barely needs to be bright. It just needs to be bright enough. 
and you remember the key command, you drop this on your extrudes, you put C1, that's the front, and hey, if you just want the bevels, you could do R1. R1 is just the uh, rounds, that's, that's just the bevels. Okay, that's helpful as well, especially if you have a really bright uh, scene. You want that edge to bling, look at that. R1 will give you just the edge. Little tip for sticking around. Thank you for sticking around. But that look, check that out. R1 does th just that round. But we want C1, that's just the front. We wanna dim it down, make it readable, but not make it exaggerated. There we go. Okay, and now let's go ahead in our view. Let's zoom in, let's get our camera all set up. And let's do a render. Let's see what that looks like. What do we like, what do we don't? It's readable, it's visually interesting. And I tell you what, you get a, you get a camera rotating around this thing, it's gonna look nice. Might, might even be a little bit thick, but we could, we could deal with that. Okay, so there is, uh, that's it. So we could go on and on about typography. That's what I had scheduled for today. Uh, and you know, if you're, uh, if you're watching this later on, on YouTube, you're watching this on our site, leave us a comment. I wanna know your struggles with typography. I wanna know um, what you've had problems with in the past as far as trying to make type look good, trying to make you know, reflections uh, you know, look interesting, and maybe I'm missing something too. Uh, we're always looking to you know, give you guys more tools, more training like this to help make your work look better. So definitely leave it in the comments and uh, I can't wait, to, uh, can't wait to hear what you guys have to say. Thanks again for watching everybody and don't forget to check out in the description below some links to other videos and training that we have to help you speed up your Cinema 4D workflow. Uh, as always, I just wanted to thank you once again for watching and learning along with us and I hope to see you in another tutorial really soon. Bye everybody. Hey, if you guys listen to podcasts, don't forget to check out the Grayscale Gorilla podcast where we talk about the professional side of 3D animation, how to get a job, how to get a raise, how to do your best work when it comes to doing this stuff for a living. We'd love for you to check out the podcast and I hope to see you in the comments soon. Thanks again, guys. Bye-bye.